Nessa girl, y'all wanted Britney Spears' ass to be free. And guess what? That two-bit man she married about to set her ass loose. And you know what's about to be free? All her money because Britney Spears don't fuck up the thing. Okay? That man done went down to the courthouse and filed for divorce. And guess who going to be walking in the door as he walking out? Michael Jordan's son and Larsa Pippen. Do Jesus. They talking about they finna set a wedding date, child. Want to talk about it? In the words of Tyler Perry, here you go. I'm riding and talking about in the words of Tyler Perry, knowing damn well I'm the one who said that. I just forgot in my opening to mention Tyler Perry because the third topic I'm going to touch on is Tyler and his deal with BET over there at Paramount. But, Grind, let's get into this thing with Britney Spears and that fine-ass, half-literate man she married. Free Britney Spears! Free Britney Spears! Oh, it was the conservatorship that made her crazy. Oh! Leave Britney Spears alone, Funky Dineva. If you were locked up all those years, you'd swirl around in your living room too. She's not bothering anybody. Let her dance. That's what the fuck I did. Y'all told me to leave her ass alone, and I did. And now what's about to happen? That man about to take her ass to the bank and cash her ass the fuck out implies over there reveling in her spinning around and he called her pussy little. Talking about that little pussy. Plies over there praying on her ass. All right? Y'all wanted me to leave her alone? Now Plies finna give her a hysterectomy with them big ass teeth when he eat that box. That little pussy. Like he said, Plies just going crazy looking at Britney Spears twirling around in her living room in her panties. With that, he called it a little pussy. I called it a skinny coochie because it ain't got no meat on it. Her coochie, Britney Spears' coochie so malnourished that she could pull the panties down right to where the head of the clitoris star and you still don't see no camel toe. That's probably why that man leaving her ass. But anyway, when I saw the headlines two days ago that said Sam had went down to the courthouse and filed for divorce, I said Operation Money Grab is now in full effect. Now reports have come out today that Britney has gotten physical with the man and has punched him in the face. Now you sit here and watch and see that every report that comes out is going to paint Britney Spears to be a complete monster in the court of public opinion. Sam probably already spent up her money to go consult with the lawyer to figure out every type of loophole he can figure out to get out of that prenup or to get as much money out of her as he can. Because now the story is she's physically violent, unable to live with, punch me in the eye, irreconcilable difference. And you watch and see day by day, week by week, it's going to be a bigger and bigger and a bigger leap to the press about just how horrible Britney was. But mind you, just a few months ago, he was all in the press talking about what he was and was not going to allow her family to do to his wife. I find it very interesting. And y'all didn't see nothing wrong with this whole twirling around in the living room with them little ass panties on when she needed to be twirling around her damn debit card. Okay? Because he about to take her ass to the bank. A lot of y'all was like, so what? She grown. Take her out of conservatorship. And if she spent up all her money, she just spent up all her money. Well, let me tell you something. She about to spend up all her money. He about to spend it up. Let me tell you something. I, I wouldn't be... They already say he got a $400,000 watch up out of ass already. And listen, that's a whole lot of money considering the fact that she ain't even got $8 worth of panties on. Them damn panties that Britney Spears... First of all, we know they ain't $8 because they look girl panties. Them is kindergarten panties that she cut to the side and tied in a damn knot. Because it ain't no grown... It ain't... <laughs> It ain't no grown person who can fit in panties that damn small. Maybe that's why she got to have them so low down to the clitoral hood of her uh, pussy, as Plies would say. 
All right, she ain't even got ten dollars for a decent pair of food in the loom panties, cause Sam got all her damn money. And trust and believe, he don't pull the shiny O'Neal. He don't siphon off all her money as much as he can while he's still in the household. He don't ran up her car, baby. He don't bought so much shit from Starbucks. He don't bought so much Uber Eats off that girl car. And now he tired of living in that house with her crazy ass. Y'all thought it was so cute and said, let her dance. Let her dance. Bitch, I'll be 40 on Sunday. I think Brittany about my age if she ain't older. And if y'all don't think it's something wrong with somebody doing the same damn dance moves, spinning around, first of all, her mind bad. People with bad minds shouldn't be getting dizzy. They already wake up dizzy. All right? Dizzy, ditzy, and dumb. And then, now she got the most small ass panties. She done went from a dizzy lady to a dizzy hoe. And now he about to take all her money like chili. Can I be a silly hoe? Now she about to be a silly hoe. A dizzy hoe. And the worst hoe you could be is a broke hoe. And God knows that coochie's so small, I don't even know if she's going to be able to fuck a man to get some more bills. And then she says she ain't touring no more. Yeah, I wanted to free Britney Spears, but I hope her money locked up. Okay, let her ass be out of conservatorship, but we need to conserve her money. Where was Wells, Wells Fargo people? Wells Fargo people? Whoever was over Wendy Williams' account, y'all need to go around Britney house and check on her. Because, baby, they, <laughs> shit, I wouldn't be surprised if Britney ain't got enough money left on her account to get a pizza. Messing around with Sam. I'm telling y'all, that... Arab man is about to be crafty as all hell. He done met with one of the finest lawyers in California. And he about to take Britney ass to the cleaners. He is going to find a way to get a couple million dollars out of Britney's president. She going to be left heartbroken. And hopefully it don't send her back into another tizzy. Back into another mental spiral. And who is going to be there to pick up the pieces after that? Then we already know the book tour is coming. Gail King, I love you to death, honey. But... You let these people use you to go against the culture because y'all already know the minute he take his ass to Good Morning America, he gonna be sitting up there with Gail Dusty Dry Wig ass. Her and that cute dog wig. Get child. Gail hair be so stiff it be sitting there like this. That wig be sitting right there. Oh, yeah. That wig be sitting just an old atomic dog ass wig. This ain't me saying Snoop Dogg called her old dog face ass bitch. He called her a dog because it was atomic. That wig be sitting just like this, bitch. I said, ooh, girl. Stiff wear everywhere. Stiff wear a girl. Don't nobody do crinkle crying no more, honey. Gail, give us something trendy. You been eating old... <laughs> you been riding and eating over coochie all that goddamn time and she ain't gave you $50 to go get a wrap? Go to the Dominicans, blow that thing out. Get, how I even get on Gail? This ain't got nothing to do with Gail. While Ronnie talking about Gail here, yeah, we need to be worried about how all Britney shit gonna fall out. If it don't get caught in the fan from her spinning around, or they don't have to shave it because she don't bump her head tripping off of them tight ass panties all on the ground, it's damn sure gonna fall out from stress when this man gets through taking her goddamn money. And speaking of stress, honey, I know why Nita Jordan got to be stressed out of her damn mind. Now, I know when our children get good and grown, we try to act like, oh, they grown and what they do in their life ain't got none of my business and it ain't bothering me. But child, Lawson don't put that grown woman poo nanny on Marcus Jordan. He down to the TMC talking about they looking for a date to get married. To get married. Is it me? Or is Marcus Jordan's relationship with Larsa Pippen giving you a Rob Kardashian tease? It's giving a very, I'm trying to get back at my family. I'm trying to punish them. I'm being rebellious because everything about this just feels wrong. And listen, if they are truly madly in love and it comes from a genuine place with no ill intentions, then I have no problem amending my comments, apologizing, admitting that I was wrong. But this just feels very like it's not going to last. This just feels very... She going to get in there and find some type of way to weasel something out of him. Um, I think she realized the Kim Kardashian jig wasn't working for her. She was too old. She started being seen with too many black celebrities and athletes. 
and she didn't want to be completely tarnished and branded as a pass around because mama was almost there. So she had to switch up her strategy. And she said, do I want a fast nickel or a slow dime? And I think mama decided she going to sit down and get the slow dime. She going to sit down and she going to continue to groom Marcus and figure out where are his money coming in and out from and try, try to get in that way. Now, I would say she try to put that old AARP eligible pussy on him and have a baby, but she may not be able to do so at this present time. And if it isn't for the fact that she has a minimal amount of eggs left, it definitely would be for the fact that she's got so much free-floating plastic and silicone in her that if she did manage to push out children, she might as well name them Mattel because they'd probably be Barbie dolls or G.I. Joe figurines considering how much plastic Palmer's glue and fix a flat that's pumped in her ass and all up in her face and in between her legs and in her butt. So I'm just saying he may not even want to have no children because they're going to be cabbage patches. <laughs> and with them rotten ass eggs, honey, they might even be damn sour patches. Okay? But I ain't talking about people unborn. See, I don't talk about unborn kids because they don't deserve it. But I talk about born kids because your parents ain't shit, you little bitches. I'll talk about born kids. Um, oh, I thought my time was off. I don't know, y'all. If you got some sons out there that got a little piece of change or coming into some money, moms and dads, pull them close to your bosom so they don't end up being taken advantage of like Laws of Pippin about to do with this boy. I don't know what the end game is. If it's financial... Or if it's my games with Scotty and or Michael. But her name had to be Laws of Pip and Joy. <laughs> Winning! Last but not least, y'all. Depending on who you are, this may or may not be some disappointing news. But it seems like the deal for Tyler Perry to acquire BET has fallen through. BT's under under a BT's company that's under Viacom. Viacom's owned by Paramount, and it's come out that Paramount has just taken BT off the auction block. They wanted three billion for the company. Tyler was only willing to offer two billion. And honestly and truthfully, at two billion, it sounded like to me like he was offering one billion too damn much because quiet as it's kept, there's nothing on BT. Anybody who acquired BET would have to be fighting an uphill battle to get that station to a viable point, a viable place where it could compete in the damn market. Now, when I went to Florida State University and got my degree in economics, them people taught me a whole lot about counting graphs, statistics, and statistically speaking, ain't shit come on there. Statistically speaking, that channel ain't making no money. And physically speaking, it ain't got no damn programming on it. They, they got a few good shows or whatever, but the question I have is, all the good shows that come on, come on BET Plus. So did the, was the BET Plus going to be with the BET sale? And if so, that's great. But Eva and her teeth and sisters and the Oval, all that stuff still ain't enough to get that company to a place where it would be worth $2 billion. Yet alone three. See, Viacom, y'all over there smelling y'all selves. Because y'all figure, oh, Tyler Perry wanted, uh, Byron Allen and Diddy wanted. We will get into a bid and want somebody going to give us three billion. Talking about they got lowball offers. No, y'all didn't get lowball offers. Y'all have over-evaluated or uh, overstated the value of that damn channel. Oh, don't forget, they threw VH1 over there up under BET too. And speaking of, that's just a damn slap in the face because you think they're doing a little something, 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 something. But let me tell you what they did. Before they did it over there, in case y'all girls don't know, this is how crafty them people like that could be. You put VH1 over there up on the BET, but you took RuPaul's Drag Race off and put it on MTV. That was an Emmy-nominated television, an uh, Emmy-winning television show, multi-Emmy, all right? But you took that and put that over there on the Good White Channel. Oh, y'all can have VH1, but y'all not going to take the award-winning program. They took Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Put that on MTV. Oh, y'all can have the rest of them love and hip-hops. The ones that the people really don't watch. Y'all can have them. 
But we gonna put this one on MTV. Now that shit been on damn damn near over a decade and they never appeared on MTV. MTV was the Jersey Shore and um I'm fifteen in the trailer park and pregnant, whatever they had, a teen mom and all that. But now y'all wanna take the good stuff that's making money and put it over here and then send VH1 with no programming, basically with his clothes in a garbage bag and say, here little black people, y'all gonna make it do what it do. Tyler Perry ain't no fool. Let me tell you something, Tyler Perry, fuck them damn people. How about you do this? Quiet as a scarab. You got the $2 billion. Fuck them hoes. Just make your own damn channel. You got your own studio. And hell, quiet as it's kept. Hell, TBS and own might as well be called the Tyler Perry channel. And USA, I think, because everything he produced come on over there. Um, consolidate it all and put it on one channel. Now, this is the only thing and the only thing I wonder about Tyler Perry acquiring a channel. Tyler's been a very smart businessman up to this point. But Tyler also has very strong convictions about, you know, what he believes in. He carries himself in such a way. His moral compass points a certain way. I would be curious to know, in order to keep said channel viable, would Tyler Perry diversify and invest in shows that are like love and hip hop and, and things of that nature? Or would he try to flood the channel out with positivity and then meet the brown shit and house of pain shit? Now, don't get me wrong. I realize that there is a market for everything and every television show is not going to speak to me all the time. But baby, baby, I don't watch that Tyler Perry stuff over there on TBS. All that Meet the Browns and that House of Pain, that shit is ghetto, ghetto, uh, what do I call it? Cheap ghetto cinema is what I call it. I used to, I started out that phrase with the BET era bass films that used to come on late at night. Y'all remember that? I call it cheap ghetto cinema. It's for... Brown don't make me laugh. In the plays, him and Quora and all of that, it was funny. But I like a bit more cerebral comedy. I don't like that slapstick, loud, physical comedy. It really does nothing for me. But I'm respectful enough to realize that there's a market for everything. And listen, if there's a world of people out there who will watch it and watch it enough to keep their channel going, then let's do what it do. Now, BET had a really good thing when they had B and Mary Jane going. When they had B and Mary Jane, I, I was like, okay, I don't know why. I don't know all the ins and outs of the financial side of things and how to secure advertisers. But I mean, BET, could you just imagine a world where scandal, how to get away with murder, being Mary Jane, loving hip hop Atlanta, the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Uh, could you guys imagine a world where all of those came on on a black channel? And it's hard, right? Because in order to produce shows of that level, you have to have the money to do it. You have to have the advertisers to do it. And it's funny because, you know, unless somebody just volunteers their money to get the eyeballs to, to, to produce those types of shows, to get the eyeballs there, to get the advertisers to then advertise, um, it ain't going to happen. But it always sickens me that these shows that have strong black leads or these ensemble cast shows make these networks a whole lot of money and it would be great if they could make that type of money for the black networks. It's just unfortunate that the dominant culture networks have the resources to do them when a BET doesn't. Like, it's hard for me to believe that BET would have been able to produce Being Mary Jane and Scandal in the same fiscal year. You know, they just don't have it. And I, I don't know what we can do to get them to have it. Um, you know, TV One is over there struggling. I mean, they, they found their groove when they found Unsung, but they never found anything else. And then what happened with the Unsung, they just started handing those out to any damn body that now we don't even feel the need to rush home and watch the Unsungs no more. Because y'all don't Unsung people who still sing and I'm confused. I'm confused. But I do like going over there watching Sanford and Son and, and um, Whatever Martin or whatever else that come on over there, at least Martin them can make 
25 cents in residuals. P Valley need to be on the new BET. I just wish all those pieces of programming like that could be consolidated. Put the Lars of Pippen and the Marcus Jordan show over there on the new BET. And hell, since Plies likes looking at Britney Spears and her little pussy spin around in the living room, put Plies and Britney dating show over there. You, you know what would be fun? And I don't care if somebody jacked this idea. Like, Plies and Britney take Beverly Hills. Like, they just be hanging out. <laughs> and then put, like, Flavor Flav on it. Go get Kanye West crazy ass. Hell, throw Jocelyn Hernandez in the mix so her and Britney could get the fight and down to the Mr. Childs. That would be fun. Put all that on BET. Okay? <laughs> Child, listen, that's all I got, y'all. I'm a little tired today. I just wanted to get on the line and talk to y'all about some of the goings-ons. I got to get in here and start prepping these stories for TGIF. And I'll call y'all hoes later. Bye.